Conference 2. This is Bleach Bang's music, and I was able to catch up with Mr. Kenny Dubin the other night. This guy is hilarious and an awesome musician, so check it out. Hello. Hi, is this Randy? Yes, it is. This must be Kenny. It must be Kenny. Hey, it how's, is. how's it going, brother? What's going on, man? I want to let you know that I, I, I bleached my bangs for the sake of this interview, and it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> that is awesome. That's, that's the best <laughs> thing I have heard in forever, man. <laughs> it doesn't look good on a, on a, uh, on a, on a green <laughs> mid-50s man. <laughs> It does sound 80s, though, man, right? right? Bleach yeah, bangs. I, I mean, it's got... <laughs> that it is sure so, does. That is so funny. That is hilarious. And just exactly what I was expecting from you. <laughs> uh, I got a million of them. I'll be here all week. <laughs> all right, man. So um, I'm not going to lie to you at all. I hadn't heard of you up until this week. And well, then you, you join the millions of others that are in that same pool. <laughs> but I am because most people haven't. I am telling you, um, I am very, very impressed. As, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, yeah, "Oh yeah, this is some good stuff, man." I've got to, I've got to talk to this guy. I want to oh, find right out. on, man. I, I Thank want, you. I want to know where what you've done. Give me a, a history lesson on Kenny because I'm telling you, songwriting and music playing like I heard on this album, doesn't happen overnight. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for the compliment. No problem. Um, all right. You want me to start in the beginning? This is a long story you're on, Captain, here. You could always edit it. I mean, oh, you bet. You. you bet. Give it all. I'll try to leave out frivolous details. Um, <laughs> my mom was a hippie, still is, played um, Hendrix and Santana albums around the house. Mm -hmm. And I would just flip out. I couldn't believe how cool it sounded. So I asked her if I could start playing guitar. You know, I took lessons. You know, first three years, I, I basically got nowhere because I wanted to do what Hendrix and Santana were doing, and they were teaching me, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb and exercises right. and chords, and, which is cool because I got a theory base. And when I got my hands on Kiss Alive 1 in 1975, that's that's when the break for the to rock happened. <laughs> so I became immediately obsessed. All I wanted to do was play guitar. Um, coming out of high school, I went right into a working club band five to six nights a week mm -hmm. called Profit. Uh, we went on to do three records, um, 85, 88, and 91. Uh, they were all critically acclaimed. Uh, the people that actually heard them loved them. We had a good fan base in this area. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, they never sold. But, I mean, people like the band. And then around about, I don't know, 93 or so, I just got sick of beating my head against the wall. I had been in other projects after Profit, written songs, um, went on to like write my own stuff and sing it and record it. And, and after a while, I was just, you know, I lost my passion for it, honestly. Oh, that's too bad. Um, yeah, that's all right, though. Uh, it was all part of the journey. Right. Um, got a, you know, cut my hair, got a day job. Um Fast forward a lot of years till, I don't know, 2014. Uh -huh. um, I had just come out of a long, rough road in my personal life, mm -hmm. really long. And uh, it took me about a year to get through that funk. And once I started feeling good again, lo and behold, I just started getting song ideas out of nowhere. And um, started writing them down. And after I had a few, I started taking it a little bit seriously. And a few after a few more... I said, wow, I, uh, maybe it's time to make a record. I'm a musician. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it, just like that, after like a 23-year layoff of not caring to write or writing any music, I just started getting these ideas streamed into my head from somewhere. I don't know where they came from. Uh, I feel like I was just the, the conduit to get them out. You know, I wasn't really like, they were coming, they were being handed down from somewhere else. Right. And you talk to a lot of songwriters and that's what they'll tell you. Like when they, when they get their best work, it's, it feels like it channels in from elsewhere. That is too cool. That it is, 
so evident listening to this album, all your influences and it's some of the greatest rock bands of all time. I mean, just all meshed together and it's it, 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 I love it. <laughs> it's just That's so cool, man. I'm, I'm so psyched to hear your enthusiasm about it. Yeah. You know, I just put it out there and I, I said, I, wow, I hope the world likes it. Well, the world likes it. <laughs> the world needs to hear it. That's for darn sure. Um, awesome. It, it, you almost answered like five of my questions I had there. Who or what was it that flipped the switch in your mind and said, you know what? This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's music. There, when was that pivot point? And you, you kind of said like Kiss Alive was the pivot point that said, boom. Yeah, the pivot point was when... I went from being a kid that took guitar lessons that really wanted to, uh, I wanted to quit after a while because, you know, uh, you know, kids want immediate gratification. Oh, right. And uh, I give the credit to my mom. She didn't let me. She made me sit in the, in the kitchen while she made dinner and, and practice my guitar lessons in front of her. So my hat's off to her. She is greatly responsible for me having stuck with it. But like I said, once I got up, I got my hands on Kiss Alive, um, Ace's playing was so good, but it was slow and methodical enough for a, a 14 year old kid to figure it out. Uh-huh. So as soon as I figured out that playing rock lead guitar was just a series of different box patterns up and down the neck, mm-hmm. it was like, that's when the light bulb went on and I went, holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> this, is the, this is the greatest thing in the world. That's awesome. And uh, from that point on, you know, I got into a, a little high school band and playing, we played like eight kiss songs and, Aerosmith and Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff, and that was it. That was done. <laughs> right on, right on. So, how big was the town that you were living in? Did you was it some place that you could play on weekends and stuff like that? Um, I grew up in West Orange, New Jersey, which is is not really far out of Manhattan. Uh-huh. Maybe like forty five minutes out of Manhattan. So, I'm not like a small town kid. Um, we were taking buses into the, into the garden to see band she shows when we were like 14 years old, 14, 15. Cool, cool. So we grew up in the lights of the big city. Right on. But, um, I mean, gigs for kids that age, basically you're doing, you know, high school dances, band battles, and, you know, they weren't every week. Like, you've got a gig, and it was a big deal. Right. That's awesome. And it, <laughs> I've been listening to this all day long, and I'm just like, man, this just feels good. You know, it's one of those where it's kind of like everything, and it all, and it, it flows so good. And Oh, uh, thank you, man. I, I, That's I, so cool to hear this stuff. It's like, wow. <laughs> well, it, like, because- like I said, it's working. What you did has worked. I don't know who you channeled it from or, or what, but I'm really digging it. Oh, man, thank you. And don't forget, yeah, I went through a, a, a tenure with a band that made three records and didn't get any of this kind of reaction. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. And now, I just out of the blue, I, I, I put this thing out there, and like everything that I wanted back then is happening now with this record. That's good stuff, man. So they don't have to share it with anybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do you- my, my, my. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's just. Wow. I'm yeah. Just, I'm floored at the reactions that I'm getting from that, people. It, it, it is. You deserve every bit of it. Um, so do you have any plans for any tours or anything, uh, any concrete plans yet that you can devour? I don't have to this? concrete plans, and here's the reason why. I, I'm the the primary custodial parent of mm-hmm. a nine-year-old girl, uh-huh. and we're exceptionally close, and I, I can't just get off and go on a tour. I mean, right now, I mean, touring for a new artist, basically, is getting in a van and playing the shittiest little places wherever you get booked. You're exactly you know, and, right. And barely making enough to stay on the road if you're lucky. Um, you know, I, I really don't know where the whole live performance thing is. I know I'm going to do it, but it's going to have to be in spot things like going away for three, four days a week, maybe most of the time because my mom can help me out. Right. But uh, as far as like doing any extended touring, I just, it's not something I can do until my daughter's in college. Wow. Unfortunately, yeah. but uh, listen, everything so far along this journey of this record has worked out perfectly. So I'm just thinking that 
the live show thing is going to work out the same way. Hey, I, I love that attitude, man, because you're you're exactly right. I mean, you know what, man? My my hands are off the wheel with this thing. Uh, it's just I put it out there, and now it's taking its own course. So, yep. Yep. And it, like I said, it's, it's working. And I mean, uh, I had no idea that I was going to run into this just by a chance email that I got, you know, and yeah. boom, I'm like, I, I'm really digging it. And, uh, and, and you're, you're, you're an awesome guy. You can tell you got a, a great personality. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and, and speaking of, that was kind of uh, one of the things was I read one of your your interviews that that said uh, you don't really take yourself so serious because you just couldn't see yourself doing like a, a video where you were this big bad rocker, you know, being serious. Yeah, it, just, it seems too too stupid and goofy to me. I can never do it. Right. So <laughs> is, is that kind of what would come across you know in a live venue or in, yeah, in a live definitely. performance I'll, definitely be, I'll be i'll be making self self-deprecating jokes between <laughs> songs the whole night that's just what i do no leather and chains right it's just <laughs> those are those are the kind of people that i'm drawn to you know people that don't view themselves like you know like they're hot shit i hate that stuff yep yep and uh, i'm too old i'm past all that i have like the ego thing is not a, an issue with me i just want to have fun now <laughs> so you know that's kind of where I'm at. That's why I dig Dave Grohl so much because he does that dude. Yep. The, the only thing he takes serious is the music. I mean, everything else is just a big, you know, big fun time with him, yep. and it's so cool. Yeah, the great guy, great guy. <laughs> yeah, I want. I would like people to view me the same way. You know. Yeah. So, do you have like any? pre-show routines or any pre-show superstitions that you feel like if if I don't do this before the show uh, it's just going to tank uh, yeah actually I do um, because I don't like to be crowded on stage I want to keep all the band members like keep having their distance uh-huh. I'll eat I'll eat like a full head of raw broccoli in the morning and by the time I get on stage at night the gas coming out of me is just you can't get within 10 that feet that is excellent man very well thought out. I mean, that no, that is I, that I, is premeditation it, <laughs> right there at its best. <laughs> no, I have no routines. Um, you know, just I, I like to just get warmed up enough so you know within the first couple songs I can rip. But other than that, you know, I'm just, I have no superstitions. Right on, man. <laughs> man. I wish I was somewhere close to you. I just. <laughs> Or, or you know, you can just come stay at our house, and we'll just book you down here at the bar. <laughs> we'll Where just, are you guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Where, Oklahoma where City. Where are you? Oklahoma City. Oh, no shit. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, I just, I would love, I, it's gonna, something's going to, you know, it's, something's going to happen sooner or later that I can, that I, there's going to be a way for me to get out and play. I just know it. So, I you're not, man. I agree. And, and I mean, gosh. It's it's got to go somewhere for you, man. It, it is it, it's too good not to go somewhere for you, and and I'm 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 standing behind you, and I'm I'm cheering your ass on. Trust me. Right on, man. Spread the word. Oh, that's what I'm trying to do. So, how can everybody get their hands on a copy of Reckless Abandon? Um, uh, it couldn't be any easier. Um, it's on. Excuse me. It's on Amazon, iTunes, CD Baby. Uh-huh. But the best way to get right to it. Excuse me. Is um oh, that broccoli's kicking in? <laughs> <laughs> Got a show tonight. The way to get to it is to go to my website, which is just my name, KennyDubbin dot com. Uh-huh. Click the buy link, and it'll take you right to the page where you can hit the CD Baby link. And from CD Baby, you can download or you can get the actual physical CD. Which I know that's become a little bit of an antiquated thing, but I personally love them because I drive around in my car and that's yes. when I listen to music. Absolutely. And the full CD, I mean, we put so much time into the artwork and the pictures, and there's a 16-page lyric booklet. See, that's that's what it's all about right there, man. A lot of people, especially, you know, people of my generation, they want, like, a tangible product when they buy yep. music. So that's why I did it. That's, that's, that's great, because, I mean, what do you do? You take the wrapper off, you open up the CD, you put it in the CD player, and you start going through the booklet. 
I yeah, mean, you, that, you, well, that's, that's, that's 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 what that's what you're supposed to do. You can't do that it off is, iTunes. But that, that's old school. Um, <laughs> you know, seeing as what's going on today, people just want to download it and play it on their phone. Sounds like shit. So I don't I don't get that. Yeah, if they want to do that, then they can just burn it and put it on their phone. But that uh, that tangible copy, man. <laughs> It is just agreed, a, man. It's agreed. Just, so it, that's why we did it, and it cost a, a ton of money, and it took a lot of time. But there was no way I was coming out with a record without making a physical product. Very good, absolutely, man. And um, the cool thing about going to your website and getting this is you can also get an autographed copy, correct? Yes, you can order an autographed copy directly from me, and if you do that, we contribute. Um, Five bucks to Wounded Warriors and five bucks to St. Jude Children's Hospital. Oh, cool. Cool. That That is just amazing, man. Kenny, thank you so, so much for for talking to me tonight. You're exactly what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> and and your music is just amazing. So um, I wish you bet the best of luck with uh, what's coming down the road, man. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, talking to you was great. You sound like an awesome guy yourself, and you, you laugh at my jokes. So. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to take my daughter out and get some ice cream, and uh, you know, let Tom know when the link is live, or you know, and then uh, I'll put it on my social media stuff. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kenny. You're amazing, and uh, hats off to you. That was a pleasure, man. Talk <laughs> to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.